Hi, this is just a quick tutorial on how to set up some reference reference images in 3ds Geo Max 2011. Okay, so basically we are going to be using some reference material that I created early. Uh, um, <clears throat> that being for a Misha Smith uh, fighter airplane. Uh, just check one of my previous tutorials on how to set it up from Photoshop. Um, so before we continue we need to set a project inside of 3D Studio Max through manage and set project folder and I'm going to browse for my usual projects directory under computer this is for me through um, F drive media um, 3D projects and 3DS Max projects Okay, so <clears throat> with that done, I should be able to set up a basic plane. So over on the right hand side here, we have the creation panel. I'm just going to go ahead and create a plane and do it in the standard perspective view. I'll just turn on edge faces to highlight the fact that it should be by default um, multiple uh, edges or loops on this plane. So as part of the creation parameters, I'm going to reduce that to 1. And I'm going to change its length and width to set size. So I'm just going to go for 100 in this case. And with the move tool, I'm going to reset its positions, which is basically done by right clicking the spinners down here at the bottom. Okay, so from here we can enter into the material editor which by default brings up the slate and I'm going to create a standard material by clicking drag and I'm going to plug into that a bitmap so just to get the dialog um, <coughs> scene assets okay I need to move my images around I forgot to do that but from here I can grab my two, three images here and I'll just copy them into scene assets, images, paste. Okay, there they are. So selecting the top view, I'm going to hit open. And I'm going to connect this output into the diffused color input. And then right click and assign material to selection and switch it on so I can see it in the viewport. Okay, so you have the image should be appearing as so. Now, the quality of the image is pretty low compared to the original uh, image here. And that's because by default 3ds Max is loaded in the highest quality possible. To do that, you need to go up to Customize and Select Your Preferences. Go to the Viewports tab go down to configure the driver and basically click on match bitmap match bitmap 512 by 512 1024 by 1024 so this ups the, to the maximum quality possible for this texture of course still it will not come up I have to go back into my texture itself and hit reload and then you see you can have the nice high quality texture All right. So now, moving into the side view, or left views, create another plane. Just plug in the same creation parameters as previous, 100 by 100. And with the move tool on, reset its position to zero world coordinates. So back to perspective. And we're going to repeat the texture application process once more. So this time again, create a standard material and a bitmap material. This time I'm going to select the side view and connect the output to the input of the diffuse channel. I think at this stage it's a good idea to name your textures as well. So this is a basic material and you can call this side 
material and I'll just do it with previously created material top material okay so we still have this side panel selected so we can right click and assign it to the selection and also switch it on and we have it up like so finally we need to go to the front view and create another plane so again we're repeating the process 100 by 100 so we have equal length and width very easy number to remember and we're going to zero this out also by right clicking the spinners and then back to perspective mode so back in the perspective viewport we'll then go through and create a third material this one I'll name straight away call it the front material and I'll load a bitmap and select the front view and connect it to the diffuse input right click it, assign material to selection and switch it on in the viewport okay so I have it nicely loaded one of the things that's a little bit undesirable is the way the shading of the viewport is making it look very dark on one side and not the other so inside of the material itself it's a good idea to go to the self illumination section of the blim basic parameters and up it to 100 just repeat this for all the other textures that you're using and you'll see that you get a much better effect so now we need to move these planes into position so we'll you move the bottom plane first I'm going to translate it in the z-axis. It's a good idea to input an exact value to get it correctly positioned. We'll do that also with the side view and we're going to move it in the y-axis. Now it may not be in the right direction in this case. Um, y looks into the screen so therefore it should be a negative number like so. So another negative 50 And then finally, the left view should be also moved in a negative number. Okay, to confirm that it's all correct, I'm just going to create a simple box here. And it's going to help me see whether or not I've got my planes positioned correctly. So I'm just going to step through the top view. As long as I can see the object, it basically means that the, the reference itself is behind it. So I'm just going to go to the front view. See, in this case I cannot see it. So I know for a fact that what I said earlier was completely wrong. <laughs> and actually it's the opposite. So yes, view space into the screen is in the y direction. It can be confusing sometimes, that's why I sort of create this plane here. This box, sorry. Um, <clears throat> finally to the left view and I've got a similar sort of problem so this helper cube is very useful to determine whether or not we've got it set up correctly okay I'm just going to delete it yep. now just show a grid switch off so you can see it nicely in this case the side view is pointing the wrong direction so with the rotate tool just flip it through 90 degrees, or sorry, 180 degrees, which can be done exactly down here. And we have it basically set up. So, what we want to do now is select all the three uh, polyplanes. We're going to go to the layer manager, and we're going to create a new layer with the um, selected objects. I'm going to call this layer our reference layer and I'm going to freeze it so we can't see it. Of course freezing by standard in max grays everything out so selecting everything again and going to object properties 
I will turn off the checkbox show frozen in grey and then I will freeze it one more time so in effect what I have here is a correctly set up reference system which I can, be, I can then use to model out this aeroplane okay thank you very much